Why we talked about last week breaking free from our chains and everyone agreed it was really hard to break free from our chains. And as we learned from Moses, when you break free, you're not just breaking your chains. You're breaking the chains of everyone who's come before you, who are still chained, and all who come after you. I was ordained as a minister in 2018 in our mother church, African Methodist Episcopal AME, which is the same church as Harriet Tubman, the conductor of the Underground Railroad who helped runaway slaves break free. And what they do when you get ordained is they line up all the ministers at the altar and you have to kneel in front of an open Bible. And then the bishops of the church place their hands on your head. They say this big prayer with power and the authority. And as they anoint you, they push your face into the pages of the Bible. Now, before they do that, they keep you up all night long. They don't let you sleep. And they don't let you sleep for a few days before that. They just wear you out. They did lectures and Bible studies. They make you do stuff. And the purpose of that is to break down any resistance that you have inside. Because when you're broken, you're open. And you're completely open to receiving the energy of the anointing. It has to go right through you into every cell of your being to give you the clarity of being unchained. So as soon as they line up all the pastors to be ordained, the bishops start calling forth this power down from heaven to anoint us. Samantha feels this rolling thunder in the room and it gets deeply silent. And in the aisles of the room, Samantha being very psychic and intuitive, she can see that there are several hundred dead souls lining up in the aisles to go to the altar. And there's just wave after wave of souls start coming out of the ground and they start crowding into the aisles. And these were souls that had died long ago who were still chained in the darkness. And for some reason, I mean, perhaps they were so abused or violated, they just couldn't break free and love themselves even when they died. And they just didn't go into the light. So while we were being ordained, these souls came and they what they were doing is they were trying to use the portal that we created by our hymns, our prayers, our brokenness, our openness, our collective energy and soul force. And they're using our ordination ceremony as a portal to cross into the light for themselves to at last break free. And Samantha and I were wondering, well, how many other people can sense this, that at the ordination ceremony, there are hundreds of dead souls in attendance. I mean, besides a few thousand living people who are in the room, there was a palpable power that was in the room. And there's a rich history that's passed down from generation to generation in the African-American church, which creates this portal, not just for the living, but also for the dead. The chains that you are breaking in your life were there in your parents' time and in your grandparents' time. And if you don't break this chain, it will be passed down to your children and their children. And that's why it's so scary. The power to break the chain exceeds the power of the chain itself. And when the two come together, the ground breaks open, the souls of past generation pass through, they rise from their graves to break free. And the sky roars and it creates a way for future generations to break free. During my ordination, people left. They were terrified. My mother wanted to leave. Samantha had to hold her in the chair. And when you finally look up from loosening your chain, you can see that you aren't just breaking your chain, you're breaking every chain behind you and before you. 
And at the ordination, there's people in the room, they're cheering and celebrating. But up above, Samantha can see this light pouring down from the ceiling onto the altar where the souls of the dead began to ascend up towards heaven. And even above that, there were families and groups of people waiting to welcome them. Whatever we do here in our lives, we are helping souls in other realms. And you know what? They're helping us. They're imbuing whatever we're doing in our lives with their divinity and their power. That is the benefit of being connected to tradition, such as African-American soulfulness and Hawaiian spirituality, because we receive the blessings of thousands of years of love.